Welcome everyone over on Facebook Live. I'm Samantha Attard, wellness coach, yoga instructor, nutrition PhD, and we are going to be talking about gas and bloating today. We're going to go through a few of the different reasons why you can be feeling gas or bloating, and when is it an actual troublesome sign? Um, because all of us pass gas at one point or another. It's completely normal. It's totally okay. But there's times where it's not good and where it could be a sign that something um, less good is actually happening in your body. So we're going to go through those couple of reasons why um, it might not be that great, or uh, why you could be having bad symptoms of gas and bloating, and then um, and then how you can fix it. So if we're looking at the major causes of especially feeling bloated and gassy, here's what we got. First one that's really major is a water imbalance. So if you're feeling really bloated and you're like feeling like everything is kind of distended and your stomach just feels ugh and you feel sluggish and slow, sometimes it's about your water balance. And so what affects your water balance in a negative way? First one is salt. Second one is carbs. The third one is alcohol. So here's what we're talking about. If you have too much salt in your body, you are going to be retaining water because your body's like, no, I don't want to be all salty. That's not good for me. So you start to retain water and thus you feel bloated, distended, not so much fun. Similar things happen when you have um, alcohol because it is a diuretic, because you are urinating out some more, you end up retaining more water in your body and you can end up feeling a little bit bloated and a little bit um, just not quite right, not your skinniest self. Um, obviously, there's also some other issues that happen when you are um, drinking alcohol because a lot of us drink alcohol and then overeat on pizza, burgers, something else that's not all that healthy, something else that might also be more salty, and then we end up having some of those issues. The third reason is carbs, and carbohydrates act to retain water in our bodies because we need that water to actually metabolize those carbs. So it's not that carbs in them of themselves are bad, but a lot of people, when they go on a low-carb diet, basically automatically lose three to five pounds simply because of water weight, simply because those carbs are helping us to retain water in our bodies. So if you're feeling more bloated, it might actually not have been that you ate something salty or that you ate something um, or you had something with alcohol. It might actually have been something that was higher in sugar and higher in carbs. So, um, so just be aware that the carbohydrates actually can act to bloat you to make you not feel as good. Uh, another thing that can be happening is an intolerance. So if you're feeling bloated or if you're feeling gassy, it might be that you are intolerant to certain foods in your diet and you're not able to really process it correctly. So the easiest example to give is lactose intolerance. So lactose intolerance, you don't have an enzyme needed to break down the sugar that's in milk. So if you don't have this enzyme that you need to break down the sugar in milk, that lactose, that sugar, stays in your small intestine. And basically what happens is your small intestine is like, dude, why are you still here? You're not supposed to be here. Uh, get out of the way. And as a result, it starts, uh, the lactose starts fermenting, starts creating gas, and again, creates this distension, this bloating feeling, as well as gas that feels quite uncomfortable. So that's what's underneath um, lactose intolerance. But there's many other intolerances as well that can lead to that bloating and gas. So we mentioned lactose, um, we mentioned gluten. A lot of people have gluten sensitivities. Any other allergies that you have, so whether it's an allergy to a nut, um, to fish, um, all of those things uh, can lead to some of that bloating and gas. And another thing that's really important, for some people, the actual nerves in their small intestine and large intestine are a little bit more sensitive. So what this means is that when there's something in your small intestine or your large intestine, and it's kind of pushing on the walls of your small intestine, you feel it more than other people. And so if you feel it more than other people, you start to feel uncomfortable and not so good. And that leads to a lot of those uncomfortable feelings. Whereas that same amount of stuff in someone else might feel completely fine and they might not notice it at all. Um, and so, what this means is that for someone like that, if you do uh, eat a bunch more fiber, it might just actually cause you to feel more uncomfortable because that fiber is acting to bulk up your stool 
um, and basically take up more space in your small and large intestine. And so you might actually not feel better with more fiber. So if you are not feeling good, again, especially after those cruciferous vegetables, adding more fiber on top of it is not the way to go. Um, I highly recommend looking up the low FODMAP diet if you feel like you are experiencing a lot of pain and gas, particularly after eating some things with fiber. Um, look up the low FODMAP diet. It looks at a lot of these um, carbohydrates that we don't digest very well. And again, none of us digest them all that well, but for some people, it manifests in feeling super uncomfortable and having these alternate periods of constipation and then diarrhea. It's not fun, um, major contributor with um, irritable bowel syndrome and other issues. So if you think that could be the case, check out the low FODMAP diet. It's a really, really great um, solution and a really great um, medication-free way to help your body feel more comfortable. So some of the different other intolerances that people have, so we mentioned lactose, gluten, um, other general allergies. Um, some people have an intolerance to fructose, so the fruit and sugar can actually um, cause some discomfort in their bodies and in their bellies. Um, and uh, sugar alcohols. I get more and more concerned because so many, so many people um, and so many products have sugar alcohols in them now in order to make them lower carb, but these sugar alcohols um, don't have, and, and people like them because they don't have carbs and they don't um, provide sugar for our bodies, but the problem is, is that we ultimately are not digesting them. And so because we're not digesting them, they sit in our small intestine, they sit in our large intestine, and they don't feel good. And they cause a lot of digestive distress, um, gas, and, and constipation, and other, other digestive issues. So definitely take a notice. More and more companies are labeling sugar alcohols on the nutrition label. So please check that out. The other way that you can see if there is a sugar alcohol in the food you're consuming is to look at the ingredients list and anything that ends in an OL, like mannitol, sorbitol, erythritol, these are the three major sugar alcohols that we see. Check, check them out because there are products that have five or 10 grams of these sugar alcohols in each serving. And my gosh, it is not doing yourself any favors. Definitely, definitely not doing yourself any favors. So how do you fix it after the fact? If you are bloated from dinner or a drink or something like that, um, one thing you can do is to actually chew on fennel seeds, which is kind of funny. Um, we're not used to it, but it's something that um, people in Indian traditions have done for hundreds of years and it feels really awesome. Um, so, so fennel seeds, you can even make a tea with fennel seeds and a lot of, there's like a lot of digestive teas that have fennel and cumin and coriander. Um, if you have the time, if you're at home, you put together a teaspoon of cumin seeds, a teaspoon of fennel seeds, a teaspoon of coriander seeds in some boiling water. It's delicious. It's wonderful. Other things you can do is eat um, some candy ginger, super delicious, but this candy ginger again helps wake up all your digestive juices, can help you feel a little more settled in your stomach. Same um, water with lemon juice can also act to kind of make things feel like they're moving a little bit more and, and release some of that pressure. Definitely make sure that you increase your water intake, especially if you think that you're um, feeling all bloated because of um, of some water imbalance and salt issues. Um, chai tea is fine, but not specifically great for digestion. Um, it's good. There's some ginger in it. There's cinnamon, clove. There's a lot of soothing spices. I wouldn't say it's like the perfect thing for fixing your digestion, but definitely is not bad, Andres. Um, so the other thing I really want to mention when it comes to um, bloating and gas is that it's really important to think about how you're eating. It's really true. Um, it's not just about what exactly you're putting in your mouth, it's about how you're eating it. So if you're someone that eats one or two meals a day and they tend to be really large meals, you might feel a lot of discomfort after you eat because you just filled up your stomach a heck of a lot. Um, if you eat them, eat your meals quickly, that's gonna also add to some of the intestinal distress that you feel, especially because when we eat quickly, we don't recognize that we are full, and so we tend to overeat. So you definitely want to be checking out um, the speed at which you're eating. Are you sitting, sitting down when you eat? Are you actually chewing? Um, and, then, and then also making sure you are eating three to four meals a day, so you're not shoving all of your food into one really large meal. Try to spread out your food um, throughout the day so then you're not overtaxing your system. 
Um, so that is a major thing that can really help you in terms of um, relieving some of your gas and bloating issues. So check out how you're eating, not just what you're eating. So to go over everything we talked about, some of the major reasons why you have bloating and gas relate to water imbalances that can happen because of salt intake, alcohol intake, or carbohydrates, but also intolerances. So if you are lactose intolerant, gluten sensitive, have any allergies, if you are fructose intolerant, if you have um, IBS and some sort of um, intestinal bowel um, or I can't think of IBS, what it stands for now, but um, these cycles of constipation and diarrhea, you tend to be more reactive to fibers and other fibrous things. Um, these can all be causing issues. And hi, Justin. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is how you're eating. So if you're only eating one to two meals each day, thank you, Harlow, irritable bowel syndrome. Um, if you're only eating one to two meals a day, if you are eating large amounts and super fast, if you're not chewing, all of these can also be contributing to how your belly feels after you eat. So if you do feel that bloating or that gas, what you want to be working on is more water. We talked about that fennel, cumin, and coriander seed tea. Super delicious, super wonderful. You can eat some candied ginger or plain ginger if you like that spicy. And then also same with, um, with lemon juice and lemon water can be really, really good. You can also take a light walk after you eat. That also can help relieve and move some of the um, gas through your body. And then it is taking a little bit of experimentation, trying to figure out, is this an intolerance? Is this related to salt? Is this related to how I'm eating? And that's the work that I really do with my clients is we figure out some of these things where you know gas could be completely normal or could be a sign of an issue. Then we need to figure out what are, what are the actual um, causes of that. Yeah, peppermint can totally help to soothe your belly. Um, and uh, Andres, fennel, cumin, and coriander seeds are the three that I put in that tea for digestive health. It's a super great formula. Um, thanks, Nutrition, for that awesome um, reminder about peppermint as being a great soother for your belly. So thank you guys so much. I hope you learned a lot today about how to prevent gas and bloating and also to fix it after the fact. Definitely, I'd love to hear your comments, your reactions, what happens when you guys try these all out. Um, so find me over on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter at Happy Healthy Sam. If you're not following, please do because I think we're right at 2,000 followers. So that'd be super cool if we hit that today. Um, it's great to see you guys. Definitely um, look forward to seeing you guys soon. And if you have a question you'd like to see answered here live on Periscope, come on over to our Facebook group. It's called Happy Healthy Humans. Totally free to join. Great place to be. You can ask your question. I will answer it all nice and here live um, over on Periscope. So I would love to do that with you guys. And I hope you have a fabulous day. Bye, darlings.